know we all love shrubs, but we all don't have a place to put them. What if I told you there was a way to plant your favorite shrub in a container? In this video, I'm gonna show you seven pro tips that will help you grow shrubs successfully in containers. The first pro tip I have for you is to consider the size of the shrub at full maturity. If you're planting something like this Anna's Magic Ball in a container, well, Anna's Magic Ball is only gonna grow maybe a foot or a foot and a half. So that tells you that it's not gonna grow very fast and the roots are probably gonna be pretty shallow. So it can last a pretty long time in a container. But if you're growing something like this Crimson Fire lower petal in a container, well, it's more like a four foot by four foot shrub. So it's gonna grow pretty quick. You might need a larger container and just know that you might have to repot more often. Pro tip number two is to consider the growth rate of the shrub. Check out this emerald green arborvitae. It's a pretty fast grower, so that lets you know that even though this would be a beautiful evergreen to put by your door, you are gonna have to repot it more often. So let's say you went from a five to a seven gallon. Well, it might only last in there a year because this is a moderate to fast grower. But if I took something like this forever goldie arborvitae even though this is going to grow up you know eight foot tall it's a very uh, slow to moderate grower so it's not going to get there anytime soon it has very shallow roots so if you repotted this from let's say a five to a seven or ten gallon it's going to last in there a pretty long time before you have to repot and then finally let's take the blue star juniper for example this is a lovely little petite evergreen. Now, if I repotted it from a one to a three or five gallon, it might last in there for years because this is a very slow growing evergreen. Pro tip number three is to choose a shrub that can withstand one to two growing zones colder than your current one. Let's take this banana peel Elysium shrub, for example. It grows in zones seven to nine. So out in the landscape, I'd be just fine because I'm in zone seven, Shelby, North Carolina. However, in a container out in the wilderness, not insulated in the ground, this plastic cover is about the only thing insulating the root ball. So in the winter time, it's gonna to feel to the plant more like a zone six or five because it's gonna freeze and not be protected. Pro tip number four is to select the appropriate container. I have here a Gulfstream Nandina and it is perfect going into fall because the foliage turns red. A lot of people like to use these around the door to decorate. Uh, let me leave it in this container here and let me show you this is probably like a 16 to 18 inch container but what i go by is when i put this three gallon in here i like to see one to two inches of extra space around the circumference can you see that right there i got extra space and the pot is a little bit deeper too probably by a few inches the larger the container, the more soil and moisture that it holds and the more insulated and protected it is from heat and cold. But on the flip side of that, if you get a container that's too large, you're going to risk getting root rot because it can hold a lot of water, too much water and rot the roots. So finding that balance is very important. Just remember, if you're putting in a much larger container, you might need to back off the watering. If you're repotting it into something that's just slightly bigger, you're gonna water more often. Pro tip number five is to make sure you provide proper drainage. You never wanna use soil from just from the ground. That is not sterile. You wanna use a clean potting soil. And you can use just all purpose potting soil. The only problem with that is it's gonna hold a lot of moisture and you're gonna to have to be really careful not to overwater. So what I personally like to do is to take something like soil conditioner, which is a ground up pine bark. And this is what all the professional nurseries do that grow shrubs and containers. They have a real barky mix because this soil conditioner will up the drainage tremendously. So I like to have a mixture of both. And I'm not gonna measure that out. It's probably three quarters potting mix, a quarter uh, soil conditioner. And I'm just gonna turn it and mix this up if you wanna come in here and check it out. See how the soil conditioner is kind of uh, bigger chunks and the potting soil is a little more fine. The two of them together is a really good combination for drainage. And then after I get done turning that up, I'm gonna take my Nandina here and place it in. Now I've already got a little too much soil in there, so I'm gonna have to take some out. All right, this is a pretty good position. Come on in. 
See how the root ball is about an inch or two below the rim of the pot? That's a good thing because when I get done backfilling this and we go to water it, water won't spill over the edges. You, don't, you never want to plant your root ball actually level with the container. Mmm, love the smell of pine bark. Pro tip number six is to water consistently, especially right after you planted, you wanna water thoroughly to get rid of all those air pockets. But even after you're done watering it in, you have to remember that it's in a container. So those roots only have access to what's in this pot. So it can't get what it needs out of the ground, which means you're gonna end up watering more often, maybe a couple times a week, but you're gonna just really have to check uh, with your fingers the moisture levels. I'm very hesitant to just tell you right off how many times you should be watering every week because it's going to be different for everybody. A sunny spot or a windy spot is going to require more water than a shadier, more protected spot. So the best thing you can do is to do the knuckle test where I'm going to take my finger, I'm going to stick it into the soil all the way up to my third knuckle and I'm going to check for moisture. If it feels pretty dry that I'm going to water, but if it feels moist, I'm going to leave it alone. And the final tip, pro tip number seven, is to fertilize. Right here, I've got a triple 14 slow release fertilizer, and I'm just going to sprinkle some around the base here. I'm not really measuring it out because you're not going to burn your plants with Osmocote or a slow release fertilizer. So I'm just going to sprinkle some out, and this will feed this plant for the next six months. Liquid fertilizers are great too, but they run right through and you're probably gonna to have to fertilize with a liquid fertilizer a lot more often than you would something like a slow release Osmocote fertilizer. If I would have planted this Nandina into the landscape where it could get access to the nutrients that were in the ground, I probably wouldn't even worry about fertilizer or I might just fertilize once a year. But remember, this only has access to the fertilizer and nutrients that were in that potting soil. So after it uses that up, it's going to need something extra like the Osmocote. Now, if you want to find this, I'm going to link it down in the description for you so you'll know exactly what to use. There you go, folks. Now you know how to grow shrubs like a pro. We have had an influx of new customers coming in from YouTube, so thank you guys for coming out. If you're not local, you can support us by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. And until next time, become a plant person. <laughs>